probably the guy that I most look up to in sporting clays. Now here is Gebin Miles, and Gebin Miles is now the national 2009 HOA high overall champion in this country. And you know, it couldn't happen to a finer young man, and there he is right there. Gebin, how are you? I'm doing great. How about you? Yeah, well, I'm good, Gibbon. I've been looking forward to this conversation now since I left uh, San Antonio. And, uh, you know, I think most of us would probably like to start out with number one, congratulations. Uh, I'm looking over your shoulder there, and you, you have a, a ton of awards behind you. It looks like you have some, some uh, checks up there as well. I know there's a round of applause going off any, any second now. And, yes, it is. I've just been told that. And uh, so, you know, when you go into the Nationals, did you go into the Nationals thinking that you were going to come out of it the champion? Well, I'll tell you what. Um, I switched guns about five weeks before Nationals. Um, the last six years I've been shooting at Parati. And actually a week before the state shoot, which was four weeks before Nationals, um, I switched to a, a Kriegoff. Now, I, I wasn't going to shoot the Kriegoff until after Nationals, but they sent it to me. And um, and I just shot it a couple times, getting ready um, for for uh, for state. You know, I, I was shooting my my Parati and um, and so I I took the Kriegoff out uh, with me, and it was just like I absolutely loved it. So um, I told my dad, I was like, hey, I think I'm gonna switch switch to this gun because it, it feels <laughs> great. And so the first two days that I shot it, I shot really really well at the state championship, and um, the final day of the state, I, I didn't shoot that great. And so, um, going into nationals, uh, I actually shot with the Kriegoff 30 out of 33 days Dude. straight, and um, you know I put in a lot of, a lot of work, um, you know, not only physically but uh, mentally. I mean, I I, I prepared, uh, you know, I, I put more hours into my mental game than I did my physical game. And um, to answer your question, going into nationals, I I thought that I would have a pretty good shot of. Of, of competing for the top spot. Okay, all right. All right. Uh, you know, it's a sign of a champion like yourself who can actually change guns that late in the game, and, and now you're going into the national championships, and all of a sudden you're walking away. You've been shooting that Parazzi for how long? Well, I've been shooting the Parazzi six years, and then the Kriegoff uh, that I switched to only five weeks before nationals. Yeah, and, and they're both wonderful guns. Don't misunderstand me. I don't think it has anything to do with that. I, I think what, it, what, what shows your professionalism is that, you know, they might have been able to hand you a, well, I'm not going to use another a name on here, but they might have been able to use a, a lesser shotgun in your hand, and you may have done as well. But uh, certainly it's a good sign of, of a professional like yourself to be able to change guns that quickly and walk away with the national championship, Gavin. I mean, you have to, honestly, at night, you're laying in bed. You, you, you got to go, oh, let's see. I am the national championship. <laughs> really, yeah. right? I mean, it's, it's definitely an amazing feeling, you know. Oh man, um, I'm sure I'm sure you've seen the shootout video of it, and well, actually, you were there, and I mean, you saw all the emotion that I had uh, when I hit that last pair to win. It was just, it was definitely the highlight of of my shooting career, and and all of the things that have happened to me over the last 13 years is just kind of flashing through through my mind, and it, it all culminated on that on that one night. It was, it was awesome. <laughs> was, was your mom and dad there? I'm sorry. I, if they were, I didn't get an opportunity of meeting you. Were they there? Uh, my dad was there, but uh, my mom wasn't. She was, she was actually on the phone, though, with my dad. She and one of my sisters got to listen to the whole shoot-off um, live over the phone. Um, and it, it was funny. Like uh, I, I had broke the last pair of targets to win, and um, the crowd is just going crazy, as as uh, you can remember. And you know, my dad's jumping around with the phone and stuff, and he forgot that that uh, my mom and sister were on the phone, you know, for <laughs> like a couple minutes, and then he got back on, and they were all cheering and stuff. And and uh, there's a couple different stories like that of people who were talking on the phone with somebody during the shoot off. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, it's kind of interesting because when the shoot-off started, and we're going to talk a little bit more about that in a minute, but when the shoot-off started, I think you had um, 
uh, I would say, a, a nice following of, uh, of friends that were there to encourage you. As you continued through the shoot-off, though, and you continued to advance, you won over the crowd, and the crowd slowly got larger and larger uh, in your favor as you switched from station to station. Did you notice that? Yeah, I mean, I, I could definitely feel that, and I, I think it just had to do with, um, you know, I've, like I said, I've been part of this game for, for 13 years, and, and the love that I have for the sport um, and the people that are in the sport, I think was definitely reflecting during the shoot-off, and, and, you know, they could see my passion uh, that I had to, I, I mean, not, not just to win, but just to enjoy the moment, enjoy sporting clays and um and you know they were feeding off of that and uh and i i, I think like you said uh the crowd just kept growing and growing because we i don't know had this this uh this bond because you know they they could see the love that i had for the game no, uh absolutely uh, through me i guess so you know given i haven't had the opportunity as you have to be in many shootoffs. Uh, although I am still at my level, the, the, the class shooter I am, a little bit intimidated when you have a lot of people there. So, so I'm going to ask you this. Now, I know you've won. You're, you're winning over the crowd as you go. Does that, is that a positive and a negative? Are you not distracted somewhat, or is it totally encouraging? It depends. It definitely depends on the moment. Um, but that night, it, it was all encouraging. Okay, good, good. Now, while we were there, and, and, and I'm going to just touch on this, because there were a lot of people holding their breath during the final shoot-off. And for you folks that weren't there, have not seen uh, the program that we played on that, uh, it is available, by the way, uh, but if you have not seen that, that night, although the crowd was very much watching everything, and it was a very intense thing when you go to the Nationals and get involved in the finals, now, you're up there with a select group of very good shooters. And when the targets are, and remember, it's at night, in the lights, okay? Every, everything becomes a little bit more difficult. And the target setters are trying to make it as challenging as possible. And we were there, as were many, and we watched on Station 1, Gibbon, where it looked like, it looked like you had hit a target. Can you tell me a little bit about that? Yeah, um, I think it was my second or third pair. Uh, yeah, probably third. Actually, I, maybe even fourth. I, I can't I can't really remember. Um, there's a lot of it that is still a blur. But um, yeah, I, I just made a move on 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 the pair and uh, missed the first target and thought that I had chipped the second. But uh, the referees didn't see anything. You know, it. it that's a pretty common call, and um, I, you know, it, it, it happens at least once a tournament for for most people um, that they think they hit a target possibly, or some other people, and uh, on their squad think that they hit the target, but then the referee doesn't see anything, so you know it's a loss. And um, the thing that you're talking about, the instance that you're talking about, the a lot of people from the crowd thought that I had had hit a target, and um, you know it's just one of those things where. Where the referee didn't think so, and it, it gets bad. The way that I handled it and and dealt with it, it kind of goes back to uh, to the principles that I've talked a little bit about with you, um, as far as the athletes' action principles. They, there's this one uh, principle that talks about how to deal with adversity, and basically, if if there's a call that you don't like, um, you kind of got to nail it and press on, which which it in that instance talks about like nailing it to the cross and then and then pressing on um you just got to get on with it so right, you right. know um well, I just, just, oh, oh, Gibbon, let me know.